afternoon, everyone. My name is Evie Gonzalez. I am one of the program managers here at the Partnership for Maternal and Child Health of Northern New Jersey. We are a maternal and child health organization that is committed to improving the health outcomes of women, children, and families. We have a variety of different types of programs, so I definitely encourage you to check out our website at www.pmch.org <laughs> um, and learn about all the different services that the partnership has. You never know what falls in the areas that you work in and the areas that you live in, so I definitely encourage you to check us out, and I will put the link for our website in our chat box. So I do want to take a couple of minutes to talk a little more specifically about the program that I work in, which is the Perinatal Mood Disorders Initiative. And this program can be broken down into four, four different major components. The first one is we do provide a lot of professional education. Um, we partner with different organizations and hospitals, and we educate their staff on the different types of perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. And we host a various amount of webinars, especially during the month of May, where, which is Maternal Mental Health Awareness Month, where we're going to have a variety of different speakers. So again, definitely check out our website, get on our newsletter, so that way you're kept abreast of all the exciting things that are coming down, especially in the PPD program. Um, the, big, the two biggest components of what we do in our program is we have what's called an emotional health phone support program. And what we do is any birthing individual who is interested in receiving follow-up phone calls, they are linked to a perinatal mental health coordinator and the perinatal mental health coordinator will speak with the mom on several occasions and then get her connected to whatever mental health resource that she needs in the community that she lives in. It does not matter if she doesn't have insurance. It does not matter if she is undocumented. It is our job to get her connected to whatever it is that she needs. And then the last piece of what we do is we have virtual support groups that meet on a weekly basis. And we have all different types that meet Monday through Friday. We have a women of color new mom support group. We have a pregnancy support group, a Spanish speaking support group. And beginning in April, we are going to be launching a working mom support group. So a lot of exciting stuff coming down the pipeline. And I do encourage you to reach out to me if you would like more information. I will post my contact information in the chat box, as well as the links to the different groups and our program and our website. So check it out. Um, this is exciting. <laughs> I am so looking forward to this. Um, you know, Inez, I just want to thank you for spending the next hour with us. This is just going to be so wonderful. And to our president and CEO of the partnership who's here with us, Marie Carl Vasilis Talti, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to be with us as well. I'm so looking forward to this um, webinar. Uh, the reason why this webinar has started is because this is a presentation that Inez used to do frequently to my pregnancy groups. And she used to come in and educate them about what are the physical, what does physical recuperation look like after you have a baby? And what are some of the warning signs? And when do you need to pursue to meet with a doctor? And there was such positive feedback, a lot of good conversation. So. Needless to say, when it came time to think about what we're going to do for Maternal Health Awareness Week, we had to have Inez come. So Inez, welcome, and I look forward to everything that you have to say, and I am so happy we worked so closely in the past, and I think that this is going to be a great topic, and for all of you moms out there, I do know that you're going to learn a lot. Um, so with Ma Just Maternal Health Awareness Day... We have had so many events at the partnership, Marie Carl. Absolutely. Yes, we have. And I just want to add that it is just so important that you're having this, um, this webinar because people really do feel alone. You yeah. know, they feel like, ah, oh, this is normal. This is not normal. No, what is normal for you? You are your own baseline. And when mm -hmm. you find that support group, it is so 
important and it gives you a sense of calm like oh, okay there's somebody that's experiencing the same thing that i am and i thought i was completely crazy Absolutely. so it, it is just so important and you know the new jersey legislator and um of course the first lady and governor murphy find it to be extremely important also um, because they're they have just signed a bill Governor Murphy has just signed a bill, I believe um, it's S705, to mm -hmm. ensure that all delivered birthing people have access to postpartum and mental health screening. Extremely, 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 I cannot underline it enough, important, especially now during the pandemic when you are just so siloed. So, so that's really important. But um, so I'm happy to be here. But getting to all the wonderful things that we have for M Maternal Health Awareness Week, of course, it was the day started by the um, Tara Hansen Foundation, unfortunately, because of her passing. But mm -hmm. it's become a week, and we know next year it may be a month. But it is really to bring awareness to the maternal mortality and morbidity that is happening throughout this, um, you know, the the nation, but specifically throughout um, New Jersey, because we know the abhorrent statistics that happens to us. So what did we do? We started off um, speaking to uh, our member hospitals, uh, health leaders in our member hospitals from Atlantic Care, um, um, Cooperman Barnabas, Trinitas, and um, Inglewood about what are they doing for Maternal Health Awareness Day. And they had really innovative things that they were doing. And interestingly enough, that was our very first episode of our new show, our new webinar called Partnership Live that <laughs> will be coming out on a monthly basis where we speak to you know, leaders in not only MCH, leaders in healthcare to talk about how we're changing the paradigm and how we're changing the landscape throughout Northern New Jersey. So that was really uh, a great, um, um, really robust and valuable conversation that we had. So guys, make sure you go to www.pmch.org and check that out. So that was one thing we did. And then we had our wonderful doula kickoff, um, Community of Caring, the Patterson Doula Cooperative, um, speaking to the pilot that we are doing with St. Joe's and Children's Home Society and um, New Destiny and working with um, Health Connect One to have free, free doula training. And we know how extremely important doulas are to you know, the whole birth, not only the labor and delivery birthing um, outcomes, but the whole birthing spectrum, how important doulas are being a member of the healthcare team. So we are starting that doula cooperative and that pilot program in um, with St. Joe's in Patterson. So whoever is listening and miss that, go to the website, make sure you watch that. If you know someone who is interested in being a birth worker, supporting um, women, antepartum, intrapartum, postpartum, we know how um, important it is to have a village of support. Please go to our website and um, tell people to go to the website and talk about um, the free, Again, I say free, free, doula free, free, training. free, <laughs> free, 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 free doula training to make sure that we're, you know, again, I say paradigm a lot, that we are changing the paradigm, that we're changing the outcomes. We know that if someone has a doula, not only is the doula advocating for the family, for the mother, for the child, for the father, they are teaching people how to advocate for themselves. Absolutely. It is so very important that you are from the community, of the community. And, you know, you have someone that looks like me. Oh, we have a special guest. <laughs> Hello. We, um, give it back so to we, you. Yes, we have a wonderful special guest joining us today. Um, she has been a champion when it comes to improving maternal health outcomes, maternal mental health outcomes. She has her Nurture New Jersey campaign, which I will put in the chat box so everyone can learn more about. It is my pleasure to introduce First Lady Tammy Murphy. Thank you for being here with us today. Of course, thank you, thank you. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, and thank you, Ivelisse, for a yes. uh, kind introduction. Um, you spoke 
about the incredible work of the partnership on my um, maternal mental health panel last May. And I am thrilled to join you now for another of these critical conversations. Absolutely. Um, on behalf of the governor, uh, Lieutenant Governor and myself, I want to thank you for not only recognizing Maternal Health Awareness Day, but also for understanding that our mental health is just as important as our physical health. Um, by coincidence, just yesterday, I was reading an interview with a friend of mine who is the president and CEO of CVS Health, in which she underscored this notion by saying that the head is attached to the body. So there is an obvious correlating need for not just physical, but also behavioral health treatments. So well done. Um, <laughs> I am not breaking any news here, but New Jersey's maternal health crisis is just that, um, a crisis. Uh, the United States is ranked 56th in the world for maternal deaths. And of all 50 states, we are ranked 47th. Um, this is utterly unacceptable. Uh, we should not be losing any mothers or any babies. But what keeps me incredibly optimistic is the overwhelming, wide-ranging, far-reaching scope of support that Nurture NJ has been able to generate. This year, there are nearly 50 Maternal Health Awareness Day events being hosted across our state by our Nurture NJ partners, uh, focused on connecting uh, families with programs and resources, um, educating moms on prenatal and postpartum care, and, and, and. Um, together, we are continuing to grow the conversation around maternal health and build on our incredible progress these past few years. And I am so glad that part of the conversation about how to care for yourself after birth includes mental health and wellness. Uh, thank you for creating a platform to discuss this topic and shining a light on something that because of needless and harmful stigma um, has caused so much pain. Uh, it is because of the commitment of partners like you uh, that our work will do so much more than improve our data. Uh, we are going to completely transform New Jersey into the safest and most equitable state in the nation to deliver and raise a baby. Uh, so from the bottom of my heart, um, I thank you for joining us in this mission, and I really look forward to New Jersey becoming a model for the nation in maternal and infant health. Um, before I go, um, I also want to encourage you to ensure our pregnant moms are vaccinated against COVID-19. As you all know, pregnancy is such an incredibly vulnerable time for any mom, and every mother feels the heavy weight of that decision. So I really thank you for your empathy and patience and persistence in helping our pregnant moms get vaccinated. Um, thank you all so much again for having me, and um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, First Lady, and for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to say such wonderful, kind words. And, you know, I look forward to collaborating with you again in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. We look forward to that as well. Keep up the great work, um, and uh, I'll see you soon, hopefully in person. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take care, Thank everybody. you so much, First Thank Lady. You. Of course. Okay, so let's get into today's webinar with the fabulous Inez Serna, who I cannot <laughs> sing enough praises about her. We've worked very closely over the past couple of years. She's fantastic. Um, and I'm just really looking forward to other women who are on this call today to listen about, you know, what are what are things that are normal and what are things that are not normal when it comes to dealing with the recuperation after having a baby? whether it be physical or mental. So what I'm gonna ask everyone to do is to please utilize the chat box, ask any questions that you may have for Inez, and we will try to get to, through as many as much as possible, depending on the amount of time that we have at the end, okay? So Inez, the floor is yours. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ivelisse, and thank you to the Partnership of Maternal Child Health for inviting me this afternoon. I am excited to go over important information. So if you're still expecting a baby, you're having a baby soon. So definitely this information will be very important. And if you had a baby and you still have to go to see your doctor soon, this information will also be very helpful. If you're a professional, a birth worker, this information will also be useful. So I'm 
Thank you, Belize, again. And first of all, I am mother of two boys. I have an 11 year old and a six year old. So I've been through this journey. And also, I'm a certified birth doula and a childbirth educator. So I do experience um, postpartum with moms. Um, as a doula, it, you know, all the information I have for them is valuable. So I really hope everything that I'm going to be hopefully teaching to you today, it will be valuable for yourself as well. So anyone, where are you guys connecting? I'm sure there's an all New Jersey. Anyone else out of state? Um, just want a quick hello, uh, expecting a baby, boy, girl, anyone? Really quick before I start the presentation, uh, quick hello to everyone. Anyone uh, out of South New Jersey connecting? I think I saw California here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for being here. Excellent. All right. So I'll start off my presentation really quick. Oh, Maine. Wow. Excellent. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. I'm so excited to do this today. All right. So I'm going to start sharing my presentation. Just bear with me one moment and I'll start off. One second. Right. One moment. Okay. All right. Okay. Again, uh, I've been in the community a, a while. I used to work for a hospital for a long time, so I, I am very resourceful. I also work in the community as well. This is my contact information. Um, we're going to talk about the postpartum, like a pro, what every parent should know. As you see, we're pregnant. It's a lot of emotions, our hormones, and all of a sudden, we have baby. We have baby at home, someone that we need to take care of. Um, so we're going to talk about all those changes and what is normal and things that you should look out in case anything seems that is not normal. All right. So let's start off. Make sure this is working correctly. One moment. I'm sorry. All right. Perfect. All right. So what are the today's objectives? We're going to be learning about liver pain after birth. What is happening? What are the physical changes after birth? What kind of self-care you need after birth? And the warning signs for sure are going to be there. The emotions you might feel. So what's happening inside your body right after giving birth? As you can see, your uterus is right now stretched if you are pregnant. Right after giving birth, your uterus continues working from one to two days after birth. Your uterus is going to be about the size of a cantaloupe metal and it's going to weigh about one pound. As you, you progress and start healing after seven days, it's going to be looking as a grapefruit and it's going to weigh about 11 ounces. After six weeks after giving birth, usually when you go see your um, caregiver, it's going to be about a size of a plum. All right. So you want to take care of your uterus when it, you're still in the healing process. So it doesn't start working and it has stretched about tenfold during pregnancy. So it begins to jump or return into a pregnancy, uh, pregnancy size. And this is called the involution. The pain that you might feel after birth, it is commonly um, known as the after pain. You're still going to feel some contractions there, which are normal. And some hospitals want to stay you home with, uh, they give you medication during the hospital stay and they might give you medication to take home. So some women are okay, some not so okay, so they might need extra medication. What is this happening? Oxytocin, the hormone that was there to help you during pregnancy and birth is gonna be back again, especially if you're breastfeeding. So if you're breastfeeding, your uterus is gonna contract and that breastfeeding is gonna help this to come sooner and it's going to help you heal as well. It's going to make you feel better. So make sure if you're breastfeeding, you're going to feel them. It's part of the normal process. What other physical changes are you going to experience? So let's start from the top. Yes, you're going to lose some hair and it's totally normal because your estrogen levels are going to change. It is normal to see about the loss in six to 12 months after giving birth. Another thing that I'm going to tell you personally, a couple things my doctor probably mentioned, but when, when you go to the doctor, you only hear about that your baby's doing okay, pretty much inside of you and nothing else. My doctor probably didn't mention that after giving birth, I was going to still look pregnant. Yes, we're still going to look kind of pregnant after giving birth. Another thing that was not mentioned to me during my postpartum is that something called dysthesis recti, which is the abdomen, ab abdominal separation, which is the a condition which the muscles separate. I didn't know I had that. I didn't know how important it was for me to exercise through the pregnancy. I took it very slightly. So for the second pregnancy, I did much better. So if your doctor's telling you to exercise, if you're doing exercise, great. If you haven't started yet, make sure you talk to your care provider so you can start doing the exercise to prevent those things. Also another issue that uh, it was not mentioned, um, which they probably didn't mention to start doing the kegels or the kegels, um, so to prevent incontinence. 
Another thing that happened to me during postpartum, the first baby was the moon swings. I was just having the baby blues the first week. I was crying because I couldn't breastfeed my baby. I thought there was no help. I thought I was alone. It is normal for you to feel that. We will talk about those mood swings in a little bit. Another issue that I had was breastfeeding. Um, I never took a childbirth class prior to giving birth. I didn't get the extra help breastfeeding, only at the hospital. So if you get the resources prior giving birth, you will definitely have better outcomes while in postpartum. So make sure you prepare everything ahead of time. The way you're preparing to give birth is the way that you have to prepare to take care of yourself and your baby. So let's move down. Yes, the abdomen uh, muscles will be slack. Do a gentle abdominal exercise for few, first few weeks. And uh, if you had a C-section, you definitely have to wait. Go back, back to the incontinence, the bladder. You're going to have some trauma, of course. We'll be pushing the baby out. Um, you have to make sure that you don't get any urinary tract inf infection. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Um, it is a high risk to happen, especially after giving birth. So keep an eye on your urine, how everything is changing in your body. The anus. Many people develop hemorrhoids. Eat plenty of fiber, drink plenty of water to ease the bowel movement. What are the fibers that you can take? Avocado, seeds, bananas, oats, blueberries, apple with skin, soybeans, nuts, sweet corn, leaf, leafy greens, anything that can help you have a perfect, if you're having up, um, any bowel movement issues right now, if you suffer any problems, make sure you fix them also during pregnancy because you're going to be having the same issues after giving birth. So make sure to take care of that now. Also your breasts, of course, you're gonna be um, breastfeeding. If you're not, it's fine. But if you're breastfeeding, uh, chest feeding, make sure um, you're gonna feel some discomfort. It's gonna feel hard and swollen until the milk comes in. Once it's established and the baby has a good latch, things should be more smoothly. And make sure you can, if you have health insurance or you work in, in, the, you're in the clinic, make sure you get the resources prior, make sure you take a breastfeeding class. Um, again, the partnership offers some free educational seminars that you can attend and they can refer you to a lactation consultant as well. At the hospital, they do have warm lines where you can call back if you're having issues. The skin, yes, you're going to continue having those stretch marks even after giving birth. They usually appear around 33 weeks of pregnancy. Once you give birth, probably a year later, you're still going to have them. They're going to be very light, nothing compared when you were pregnant. Your skin is going to keep reminding you of the wonderful experience that you went of being pregnant. Your pelvic floor muscles, you may experience temporary incontinence, such as when you laugh, when you sneeze. You're probably having those issues now if you're pregnant. If you are, if you are that means that you need to get back on doing your uh, pelvic floor exercises. And the same thing, you're going to do them because if those same muscles are going to help you push your baby out. So you want to make sure they're strong now for birth and after giving birth. So let's continue to the next. What are the physical changes also that are gonna happen during birth? The birth canal, of course, if you have a vaginal birth, it's gonna shrink back after three weeks of giving birth. I kind of can emphasize the Kegels or the Kegels, you have to do them. How do you do them? That's the only exercise that no doctor or myself cannot teach you how to do it. The only way that I'm going to tell you how to do them, if you know how to do them, excellent. Um, otherwise, if you're here, you've never done it before. No one has explained you how to do it. The best way to find them, those muscles are next time you use the restroom and you're urinating, you're going to sit there and you're going to pretend that if someone walked in the bathroom and you have to quickly stop the flow. That, what those muscles that help you stop the flow is what you need to squeeze during the day. It's important, again, during pregnancy to do it. You have to squeeze for the count of five to six seconds and then relax for a count of five to six. You have to do the set of 10 or 15 each time. So you can do them daily, okay? Also your bladder, uh, you have to empty the bladder every, two to, every three to four hours while in the hospital. Your nurse will definitely keep track of this so you don't have to worry. IV fluids, um, and you, you will have IV fluids during the hospital. So your legs and hand will also be um, swollen. Continue drinking fluids. The episiotomy, most, I don't say most, but some doctors are, are uh, minimizing the episiotomy. Uh, but if you end up having one, it is a cut in the, uh, in the perineum, which is the area with the vagina and the anus. And this cut um, is gonna heal within one to two weeks. 
Um, definitely you're gonna have some pain there for a while, especially the first time you have intercourse um, and then it should go away. If there's still pain after that, you make sure you see your care provider, okay? Um, let's see, do not, um, if you have a cesarean, you know, it's, you shouldn't have this discomfort, of course. Um, if it's difficult for you to empty the bladders, um, make sure that, you know, put it around the faucet and, you know, press on it if you didn't have a cesarean. Um, call your care provider again if you don't see that things are not going the way you expected. Um, again, in a positive note, the baby's not taking much space, so you're not be running to the bathroom much, but you want to make sure you continue drinking the fluids. It will take a week or two for you to resume the usual bowel pattern. So if things do not get better and you see that you are not healing correctly, you continue having incontinence, um, I will suggest that you see a urogynecologist and you can definitely have your doctor refer you one if you still need additional help. Let's talk about the perineum. The perineum is the area between the anus and the vagina. You will have stitches, especially if you have the uh, episiotomy. Again, swelling and bruising will be there. It, during the hospital stay, they will give you all the uh, things that you will need. They will give you ice to put there, the thermoplast, they give you a peri bottle as well. You could definitely take this home. They will give you also to take home. So make sure you bring them with you. I also found online a hot and cold postpartum therapy packs. I wish I had this when I had both of my kids. Uh, unfortunately, you know, things, uh, you know, as the years pass by, more things come out. Uh, you can definitely find this about $20. You can find them at Bed Bath & Beyond or Bye Bye Baby. So make sure you, if you're pregnant, make sure you get them ahead of time. All right, and you're also going to need sanitary pads because you're going to have bleeding. We'll talk about that in the next slides. Um, so make sure you pack them as well for the hospital. So the hospital do provide them. Um, it is optional for you. You can ask if you can use uh, the ones from the hospital. You can use yours. It depends how much the bleeding is there. But since you have everything provided in the hospital, might as well just use those. Perineum, uh, you're going to be applying ice uh, the first 24 hours. It feels amazing. It's going to help you with the swelling. And also you can do sits bath, warm water for 20 minutes, two times three, uh, two to three times a day. You have to keep that area clean, carefully pat the perineum always, always from front and moving towards the anus. You don't want any infection in that area. You can squirt water, uh, warm water. Do not use the toilet paper, especially if this is your first time getting up in the, in the hospital, even at home. Just make sure how you pat very gentle. You can use hazel soap packs for, for the perineum. All right. And then if in the future, another thing that you can do is something's not going okay with the perineum, you, you're still having some issues, you can always find a physical therapist for that as well. What other changes um, you're going to see after birth? You're going to also have the bowel movement. Again, take care of that. Now if you're pregnant, it's going to slow, it's going to be slowly going back to normal. Again, this is because of the medication, the hormones, the lack of movement, not enough fluid. So you should have bowel movement with one to two days after giving birth. And it is uncomfortable, okay? I do recall that being very uncomfortable. The hospital will provide you with a medication if you need it. Um, but again, take care of that now. What do you do if you're having discomfort? Make sure you relax, use a stool, pressure to the perineum. You're going to feel pressure in the perineum if you have stitches and do not strain. You have to drink water, six to eight glasses of water. If you're drinking a lot of water now with pregnancy, you have to continue drinking water after giving birth. Yes, and because you also probably breastfeeding. You're gonna have food with fiber, stool softener, um, and then keep moving, okay? Keep moving, you, and you're gonna get up in the hospital if you can, you move around, and once you get home, back to your exercise routine. Hemorrhoids dilate blood vessels. That's why the hemorrhoids are gonna appear because of the blood vessels inside of the age of the anus. When you were pushing, you're gonna feel discomfort, itching, irritation. Try not to sit. Um, or stand for a long period of time. If you have hemorrhoids, you can use cold washcloth, a warm bath, hazel, uh, soap pads, wet wipes instead of toilet paper. Ask your doctor if you can use some cream, supp suppositories, and pain medication. So um, again, all the hormones that you had at pregnancy, they need to go back to normal, and that pressure from the baby's head, and, and you know, and constipation, 
although it's causing the hemorrhoids, okay? Um, so as a reminder also, uh, make sure that if you can, there is doulas for birth and there's doula postpartum. So if you need help at home after giving birth, you can hire a postpartum. The, the doulas will also be able to help you and guide you with questions, concerns, resources. Um, and again, refer you back to the care pro provider if you're having a major issue. What are all the physical changes after birth? Uh, this one definitely, it is important for you guys to know. Yes, there will be bleeding after giving birth. The first period is about seven to nine weeks. If breastfeeding, it may take about 12 weeks of longer. Yes, you can get pregnant while breastfeeding. However, many moms experience a time of delayed fertility during breastfeeding. If your little one is older and eating solid foods, you, your changes in ovulation and risk of pregnancy increases. So don't take the chances. Make sure that you talk to your care provider. Muscles and joints. Your body's all going to be in pain. Absolutely. Labor could take a long time and all that movement and, and discomfort. Um, yes, your, your body's going to feel sore. I personally... Uh, with my boys, I had two big babies. One was 8.4 pounds. The other one was 8.8 .8 pounds. They were a vaginal birth. The second one was no medication, nothing on it. Uh, with the first one, I did experience a lot of interventions. I had the epidural. I had many other things done to me because I was un unprepared. I never took a class. I, I, was, I thought it was going to be in and out. It wasn't. So you definitely, I remember being sore. I remember being uncomfortable to get up. Uh, my partner was there to help me um, because I couldn't do much. So everything was just um, difficult. Even breastfeeding was difficult. So make sure you guys are preparing. Make sure you guys are reading books. If you're not taking a childbirth education class, make sure you are preparing, reading evidence-based information that you're reading from a trustworthy website. Um, the, the more knowledge you have, the better informed decisions you will make during labor. Also, you're gonna have red eyes pushing the labor can make you feel um, bleed under the whites of your eyes. That could also happen to the baby. That is definitely will go away with a few weeks. Your skin, dark patches on your face. If you have it now, the dark light on your belly will go away as well. Again, the stretch marks, don't worry about them. But yes, all those things will be still be present, but they will go away. Um, the vaginal discharge, which is called lochia, will be present after giving birth. Draining from the vagina after birth, the amount and the color of the changes as the uterus heals. Loki smells fleshy, musty, or earthy. The smell should not be bad. You have some cramping and pass small clots. Be sure to tell your nurse or healthcare provider if you soak more than one pad in an hour. Pass a large ball clot on tissue. Notice your discharge has a small as bad smell. So how is the vaginal discharge going to be? The first day is definitely going to be like a menstrual flow. And then as you move and the day progresses, things should be getting better. Okay. For if you end up having a cesarean or you had a cesarean, um, just a reminder, it is a major surgery. Okay. So you're definitely going to see some changes. Um, you're not, you know, you're still going to have some bleeding, but not as much as you had with a vaginal birth. The post cesarean pain could be from the incision. You can have stitches or clamp, um, and also some gas may build up. So daily activities could be painful for a few days. Keep an eye on the scar if it heals, it's inflamed or pulse of fever. To help reduce the pain, how are you going to reduce the pain, especially had a cesarean? Slowly get up from the bed. The best tip that I've given to my parents was, um, the first time you're getting up, you can use a pillow against your abdomen, slowly gentle, go forward and push with your feet and then slowly walk. Definitely avoid gas producing foods. Yes, even if I had a vaginal birth, I was still being careful what thing I ate after giving birth. I didn't want to feel the after pains, okay? So make sure you avoid the lentils, the beans, cabbage, anything, cold beverages such as soda, um, especially in the hospital setting, I know after giving birth, you want to eat that burger, you want to eat everything that you've been waiting for, but kind of slowly go in there. Don't go too fast because you don't want to feel those after pains. A scar sensitive to touch and painful. If, you know, if, if your scar is there, make sure you're wearing a big underwear. Make sure you bring the 
to the hospital, the state amount of state that you're going to be, make sure you bring either a gown or a pajamas that are loose so you're not touching that area. If you have a vaginal birth, uh, wearing a gown is much easier. Um, and also the scar will, will help, will heal, I'm sorry, we heal within six weeks. Use the fingertips to massage and soften the scar tissue. Again, you can use vitamin E oil, uh, gentle walking, and slowly. Everything in the hospital setting will be taught to you with the nurse. However, when you have a baby right in front of you, it's kind of, you, you don't hear much. It's just, you, you, you so many things happening around you. They usually give you a paper with all the information you need to know. So just go back to that and refer to see if everything that is happening to you looks normal. What are things that you can do to manage the pain, the postpartum pain? Um, you can continue doing your comfort measures. So if you have taken a class or you had a doula, um, we teach you how to breathe, how to comfort measures and how to you know, massage and relaxation. So make sure you continue using that after giving birth, deep breathing, the music, uh, the ice pack always comes is welcome, warm pads and the abdomen for cramps, warm sit bath and herbal bath. Um, also, pain, uh, if you are still feeling discomfort, medical pain relief options such as topical cream or spray in the area, over-the-counter medication like ibuprofen, prescription medication. Of course, everything has to be discussed with your caregiver prior taking any medication. So um, if you don't like emerging completely, um, you can always buy the assist bath that are on the picture on the right top. Um, they're easy to use. It's a basin that you put on the toilet, you see on it, and then you get a soothing soak of the important part of the vaginal without having to emerge in the tub. If you want to do a herbal bath, it is welcome to do it. Of course, anything that can relax and make you feel connected again with yourself, I think, you know, having a herbal bath can help. Um, and again, it's just to pamper yourself. It is safe to use a herbal bath uh, quite often as, um, as soon as you are uh, ready to, you know, after giving birth. Yes, you can take a herbal bath if you have stitches. Um, many midwives will recommend it. Um, to do it once a day for the first week. And in a good quality pre-packed mixes that I found online, you can find them at Mother Love, Earth Mama, Angel Baby. Um, so you can purchase it online, okay? What other things that you can do for self-care? Slowly work longer to uh, longer workouts and harder exercise. Ask your care provider when to start. Again, the Kegels are here again. <laughs> so five minutes three time today. Um, having sex after giving birth, yes, it is going to be painful, especially if you had the episiotomy and you had a cesarean. So it could take up to six weeks to heal. Um, using a water-based cream jelly uh, can help you with vaginal dryness. So if you have some issues now with having sex, um, then they should definitely uh, discuss that with the OBGYN. Um, so you prepare once things go back to normal. Communication is definitely key with your partner. We rarely talk about this. Um, when we go to a doctor, we are more about, okay, how's the breastfeeding doing? Are you healing okay? You know, they go over certain things, but this is one of the things that we don't really talk about because we're not even thinking about that yet. <laughs> we're thinking about other things. So definitely have that conversation prior with your partner and afterwards. Preclampsia can sometimes happen during the six week postpartum. Swelling, sudden weight gain, or having headaches and trouble seeing things, definitely call your doctor. Yes, rest and sleep. Do your best to sleep when your baby sleeps. Um, it is hard sometimes, but forget about anything else that you have to do in the house. There's gonna, I'm um, gonna, next slide or so, I'm gonna give you some tips and things that you can ask for help and how you can get the help. Um, you definitely wanna enjoy a good health. And you want to enjoy a newborn. But if mommy's not healthy, mommy didn't heal correctly, then you'll not be able to take care of a newborn. So make sure that healthy baby equals to healthy mom. Okay. So um, also, they might be going back to the having sex. You may have a, a, a low libido, may occur after giving birth. Um, you know, and also you might need some physical therapy, for, uh, pelvic floor physical therapist. Um, so hopefully things will go okay, but you want to know this information ahead of time. What are some urgent maternal warning signs that you should definitely look for? Um, he headaches, dizziness, of course, if you're blurry, uh, vision, 
any fever, the uh, sanitary pads, you continue checking them as you go, um, you know, any swelling, extreme swelling, anything that is just not normal for you. Um, you, you we all, as a woman, we are connected with our body. You know, we have the inner voice, you know, something's not right. Definitely don't, you know, think about calling your doctor um, or even your doula or your any, you know, if you have a childbirth educator that you took a class, we are here to help you and make sure that you are doing okay. You're not alone. We do feel alone the first week or so, but we are not alone. So make sure you're getting the help that you need. So um, one thing about the American College of Obstetrician and Gynecology is pregnancy-related complications predict risk of subsequent diabetes and cardiovascular disease. These are the risk factors for cardio the cardiovascular disease that appear during pregnancy. And these risk factors are emerging as predictions to a future. So if you have any complications now, regarding um, gestational diabetes, gestational hypertension, preeclampsia. These are associated with a, gr a greater risk of having a cardiovascular disease. When you go see your doctor after the six weeks postpartum, make sure your doctor is going over the following things. Make sure you're talking about the infant feeding, how's your bladder doing, your incision if you had a cesarean, if you have the bleeding, how your bowel movements are doing, the safety on your home, nutrition and exercises, the emotions and well-being, and also they're going to go over the family uh, planning and contraception, and of course, how your baby's doing with the infant care, and any resources, any support that you can get in the community, they should be able to provide you with that, and, and I'm here myself, I'm, I'm well connected in the community, um, and I'm in Hudson County, but I'm connected with different communities um, so in New Jersey, so if you're looking for help, please don't feel, don't, you know, feel free to reach out to me to you believe and say, hey, I need to contact Ines. I need to talk to her. I'm here to listen. All right, so let's just quick video here. Just give me one moment. I'm just going to hit play. One moment. He's the one who noticed his mom's face was swollen. They're the ones she confided in about her change in vision and headache that wouldn't go away. He's the one who really listened when she said that something just didn't feel right. When she had chest pains a few weeks after delivery, she's the one who insisted on admitting her to the hospital. Too many women die from pregnancy-related complications each year in the U.S. Death can occur during and up to a year after pregnancy. It doesn't have to be that way. Most deaths are preventable. Know the warning signs. Hear her concerns. You could help save her life. Learn more at cdc.gov slash hear her. So there is additional information resources that you can look up. All right, I'm sorry. Let me just make sure. Next slide. Oops. All right. The other emotional um, changes uh, that um, I'm pretty sure the partnership has additional information and webinars that you can attend. Um, be realistic. Do not try to do everything yourself. I try, especially with the first one. I was trying to multitask. I was trying to be a mom, a wife, friend, daughter, and it was just a lot. It was a lot. And then I wish I'd had more stuff and resources to go. Um, too, but I, I just felt that I was superwoman, you know, and we're not, we're not, we definitely need help. Do not try to, again, ask for your help, um, need, need time for yourself, you need to make time for yourself. The postpartum blues, yes, they are real, you know, you're going to feel that you need, that you can breastfeed, there's something, you know, happening in your body, the changes, is just like a um, roller coaster of emotions because of your hormones getting back to where they should be and normal. So some people get it a few days after their birth, these feelings are normal and go away. Um, this postpartum depression and anxiety, which is a serious condition, about one in two every woman um, to, uh, suffer tens uh, postpartum uh, depression. If you feel depressed for more than two weeks, you may have postpartum depression. What are warning signs that you are suffering from postpartum depression? You have trouble sleeping. Uh, feel anxious or nervous, uh, crying nonstop, not enjoying life or your baby, touch or harming or harming the baby. So definitely there is a lot of resources 
especially here in New Jersey, we do have resources for postpartum depression. Here's some helpful tips that I will give you um, as a mother of two and also as a doula. Um, you know, you definitely want to make sure you have someone nearby for the first 24 hours. So if you have a friend who gave birth and she has children already, she can help you, a mother, sister, whoever you feel is going to be there for you that first 24 hours, your partner, of course, um, to help you, definitely you should have someone. Prepare meals in advance. Yes, I wish I had known that. I, I was cooking in the middle of having a newborn. So make sure you prepare things in advance. Understand newborn care um, prior to giving birth. Make sure you at 10 o'clock, many hospitals do offer newborn care. So make sure you take one. Uh, find a mommy and me support groups near you. The partnership has many support groups that can help you. Um, use social media. Definitely, there's a lot of Facebook groups for new moms in your area. So make sure you start looking up that information now. Discuss your cultural practices and preference with your caregiver. So if you have anything that you guys do after giving birth and you prefer them to be respect them, well, you should definitely bring that and put that also in your birth plan. Um, Talk to your family, uh, mother, grandmother about your postpartum care traditions. I can say on um, my personal experience for the first one, uh, my mom was there very helpful with 40 days. We had to take care of my body, heal, which was more about a diet, chicken soup, oatmeal, fruits and vegetables for 40 days. It was hard because I did want to eat everything else, but not a chicken soup. But I felt it helped me to connect with my body, my baby, my mom. So those traditions, you should definitely go back to someone you can refer and see what kind of traditions they, they did and how they helped them heal. It is very difficult to heal nowadays, especially if you're working from home and you're doing virtual, it doesn't mean that you're healing, you're still working. So make sure you take care of yourself. Remind it, um, also if you are a caregiver or you know a specialist here, make sure you're reminding moms about their postnatal visits. Um, make sure she doesn't forget that she has to go see her doctor. It's incredible here in the U.S. that about 12 visits we do pre pre uh, in the, during the pregnancy, but only one postpartum visit. So we don't have a, a, enough time to talk about everything with our caregiver in just one visit. So that's why you need a network of support. Eating nourishing food, definitely the soup again. You know, if you like chicken soup, or otherwise you can try all the soups. Rest and sleep, um, learning all about breastfeeding, power birth, keeping a healthy environment for you and your baby. And those do what makes you happy. What made me happy back then? Listening to music, taking a walk. I had a summer baby, so I was able to get out. I know it's kind of difficult now to do things, especially with COVID, but at home, make sure you, if there's anything that you like, aromatherapy, if you want to get a massage, if you know, you like to do makeup, your video, whatever it makes you feel, you have to kind of reconnect with yourself. So other questions that you have to ask yourself for the recovery, who will help you to get around and bring you what you need? So make sure you're taking notes of this. Sleep, who will take care of everything else at the home in between so you can sleep and rest? Meals, who will be cooking? Who will be actually ordering the food for you? You can assemble a meal train to have friends and family deliver it to you. Breastfeeding support groups, I mentioned that already. Emotional support, who can help and who you can cry to and text at two in the morning. We all have that one friend um, or mom or sister that you can call at two in the morning. You know, for me, it was more, I think, um, posting on Facebook was my thing when I had my first one. You know, I'm here with my kid, two in the morning. You know, that made me just feel to let people know that all right, I, I'm not alone. I'm here. You know, I'm going through a situation. Returning to work. If you do work, how will your workplace accommodate you when you return? Okay. And going back to the cultural practices, a lot of people from the Asian India, they do practice a tradition of postpartum recovery with 30 to 40, 40, 42 days after giving birth. Um, this definitely contributes to healing of the wound, um, bonding with the baby, breastfeeding, uh, limiting the chances of postpartum depression and post-traumatic stress syndrome and feeling connected. So just go back and see some reference with your family if you have them around, of course. I like this quote when I found it is pregnancy is a window to a future health. After birth, there is a sacred window of time, a time for complete rejuvenation of women's physical, mental, and spiritual health, a time for deep extended bonding with her newborn, 
the first 42 days after birth set the stage for her next 42 years. Optimization of health is in the postpartum uh, period may improve the health of the women across the lifespan. For women having a subsequent pregnancy, they may be a healthier at the start of the next pregnancy. So if you take took care of everything during the first pregnancy, then you will be a healthy mom for the second or so forth baby that you're going to have. So for me doing those 40 days with the first child helped me for the second one. I even tried all natural, no medication birth with an 8.8 pound baby because I felt more one, I had, um, I had more knowledge about birth. Of course, I had the experience. But at the same time, I had a network of support. I became a doula, I became a childbirth educator. There was so much knowledge that my doctor was there to support me all the way to the end. I remember that I almost gave up and almost had to ask for the epidural. And my doctor walks in there. I will never forget this. He said, you said you want all natural. Oh, well, we're going to have all natural. And I end up pushing this baby just because hearing my doctor telling me those words because we were on the same page. So make sure everyone is on the same page with you from day one all the way until you heal. Take time for yourself. If you do have a partner, yes, we do forget about that time that we need to be with our partners. Um, make sure that you do not forget that you were a couple before you had a baby. Time together will help you lower the stress you are both feeling from a new routine and lack of sleep. So make sure you guys go out, make sure you're still having those dinners together. If you have grandparents around, get them involved from the beginning. If you need to have a babysitter, come over and take care of your baby. Um, so make sure you get the meals in the freezer, ask someone to watch your baby. Your phone is, you have your phone, all the technology you run in front of you to learn all about taking care of this baby, take care of yourself. And also as a reminder, make sure that you're doing your uh, yearly screening with your uh, uh, primary physician. Make sure you're going to check your breast. If you're that age that you need to have a mammogram, make sure you're doing uh, the pap smear every year as well, because we do forget to do all this because we're taking care of a family, a home. But do not forget about yourself. Love yourself, your body. Having few people around who love you and support you is crucial. Mothers are not meant to be alone in isolation. We are social beings and we need to have a good support network we can count on. If your partner, family, or friends cannot be there to help you, you should really consider paying someone to help you. Have a postpartum doula. And it's only a few weeks, and it's certainly the worth the worth investment that you will do. Definitely, it's investment, but that you will you will appreciate for the rest of your life. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Again, this is my contact information. I would love to hear from you. Any takeaway from this uh, webinar? Anything? I, I'm not able to see everyone yet, but let me just um, stop sharing. Again, you can reach me for any questions. I do teach childbirth education classes online as well. I'm a doula again in Hudson County, um, and I do serve all the areas as well. Thank you, Jubilees. Oh, thank you so much, Inez. This was fantastic. Just like I knew that it would be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I loved what you talked about at the end, you know, getting grandparents involved and focusing on yourselves as a couple, if you have a partner, because I think one of the biggest things that's so important is that even though you are transitioning into motherhood, that's just one of the roles that you play, you know, and you're still a professional, you're still a daughter, you're still a wife, a girlfriend, etc. So yes, your baby is going to be a huge part of your life but you're still able to pursue the things that you want to and make sure that you do have time for self-care and taking care of yourself as well, because that nourishes you emotionally. So I love that you ended on that note. Um, I do have a couple questions. So I know that we've been talking a lot about doulas, especially with Marie Carl and this amazing program that we have that's starting. So can you talk about what's the difference between a birth doula and a postpartum doula? Definitely. So myself, I'm a, I'm a, a birth doula. I'm a certified, which means I can give you support emotionally, physically, and spiritually if you need me during your whole pregnancy, birth, and even up to two weeks after giving birth. Um, so I'm there with the mom. You know, if, if you need that 
person just to be there. Sometimes we, you know, we have a partner there and we, you know, we feel okay, he's going to be there. But unfortunately, men have not experienced it, especially since your first baby. They don't know the whole process. As a doula, I know the whole process. As an educator, we educate you step by step what's happening. So you can make informed decisions during birth and after birth, of course. But it's important that you, as a doula, I give you that communication and I'll give you all the tools so you can advocate during birth. The postpartum doula um, also are found in the community as well. They come to your home and continue providing you that support that you need for yourself and with a newborn. Wonderful. And I know with everything <clears throat> going on with COVID and, you know, women giving birth during these times in the hospitals and with all the ever-changing regulations, if you want to have your partner there or a family member there for your birth, can you also have a doula there with you? Well, it, it, at the beginning of the pandemic, doulas were not allowed to be there. But now okay. with a new, um, I believe was released last year that doulas are welcome into the birthing room even with the new pandemic that we recently had with the new situation we had back in December um I have some couples giving birth soon and I call the hospital there's no issue with me coming in as long as I'm vaccinated and I'm tested within a 48 hours window before the mom gives birth it's kind of tough it's kind of hard that it's a tricky <laughs> one but I'll try my best <laughs> and also, wait a minute uh, you you don't mean babies come when we want them to come. It's, it's yeah, ridiculous to get it that COVID tested. <laughs> <laughs> I, I booked my appointments already. I just don't know when it's coming. But I, as a doula, I have to keep track of everything. Also, as a reminder to um, the community here in New Jersey, doulas are covered by Medicaid. I am a Medicaid provider. Um, I'm still in the process of learning everything, of course, but I am serving women now. So if you do have a Medicaid, um, you know, you participate with different insurances, you can reach out to me and hopefully we can guide ourselves and see where we can take you and help you. Wonderful. So we do have a couple of questions. Um, one of the questions that came in is, what have you found to be successful in dealing with postpartum anxiety? So one thing that definitely I think having the knowledge prior, having the resources, taking a class, you know, having the knowledge and before. I think if we are bombarded with so much stuff, you know, right after giving birth, and you don't know where to look the information, if this looks normal, I think that can definitely help you. And having that network of help and support, so you ahead of time know who's going to be there to help you. Absolutely. And, you know, and I can also talk about the postpartum anxiety as well, is that, you know, getting like what Ines had mentioned during her presentation, it is so important to have some sort of help and some sort of village. And I know that it's difficult to do that, especially with everything going on with the pandemic, but that's why you want to take advantage of all of the support groups that we have going on. Um, through the partnership or through other organizations like Postpartum Support International, because you will be able to build your village by participating in a group, you know, right. and meeting other um, women and being able to have some sort of socialization that's happening on a consistent basis. So, you know, that's a great way to help deal with um, anxiety. If you see that it's getting to the point where you are needing to speak to a therapist, you know, that's the wonderful things that I talked about with our program, that you will be given the opportunity to be connected with someone who can find a therapist for you. And the great thing about that is you can do it right in the comfort of your home because most, ther most therapists right now are providing telehealth services. Um, so please, you know, reach out to me. I will put my contact information in the chat box. And if you feel like this is something that you're struggling with, let's get you connected to whatever it is that's, that you need that's gonna make you feel better. And, and um, also I just recently heard, we're also gonna have nurses, visiting nurses after birth. I believe that's just something new that just came out. I'm not wonderful. sure if you know much, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think that's what I read that um, you know nurses will be available for women after birth. That's fantastic. So many great <laughs> things coming down the pipeline, right ladies? Um, okay, how do you introduce safe sleep practices to moms back to sleep who may not adhere to this practice? Back sleep regarding the baby, the newborn, or? Um, oh. 
newborn newborn okay so um yeah this is a tricky one with the newborns uh well i can tell you what works for me and i have helped my other clients is having a routine for the baby starting off with the baby waking up and waking them in, in, in the morning you know breastfeeding if you're breastfeeding or bottle feeding the baby also, um, then you change the diaper afterwards and make sure you're having play time with the baby, new, newborn. Even if it's a newborn, you can still do things, you know, play uh, a maraca, music, you know, interact, talk to your baby, have that play time. And then if you want to give the back to your baby and then continue the day, you can even read some books to your baby to try to keep this baby awake as much as possible. I know they sleep a lot, but you got to kind of, uh, you know, keep that. And also when it's time to sleep, make sure you have a time when do you want to put your baby down to sleep. Again, if you didn't give the bath at the beginning, you can give at the end and you can massage your baby, um, use lavender. I used to remember using lavender for my babies, doing a massage. And then again, you can make noises during the day, of course, because I see moms making the mistake. I probably make this mistake probably with the first one. Everything was like, <laughs> Shh, quiet, don't make noises, everyone you know get away do not come near this script but um i didn't do that mistake with the second one i made noises i cook i clean i was making all the noises during the day once six o'clock or seven o'clock at night we kind of slow down a bit the lights were off time to sleep and i still keep kind of routine with my kids again they're six and they're 11 but at mm -hmm. this point my life has helped me and they they go to bed at 8 30 everyone is out because it gives me that time for me to do the kind of job that I do and to yeah. also connect with my partner as well. Mm -hmm. So that's what helped me. Everyone is different, but I think that's what helped me and has helped also all my clients as well. Yeah. And that's so crucial because, you know, you don't want to put the baby to bed at like nine or 10. And then how soon after are you going to sleep and you're not getting a night in for you before you begin all over again, waking up and taking care of the baby. So I think a routine is great. It's something we talk about a lot in our group. And I do agree. It lets you have a little bit of a night and an opportunity to connect with your partner. Um, okay, so it is 2.04. I want to be cognizant of everybody's time. Inez, I'm going to ask you to put the best email that uh, the moms can reach out to you if they have any other questions that we're not able to be answered today. Please feel free to reach out to her. I want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart for coming in and spending the past hour with us. I really hope you got some great information and we look forward to seeing you in the future for upcoming events. Um, I will also put my contact information in the chat box and for any moms that would like to reach out to me about how they're feeling emotionally um, or interested in learning more about our phone support program, our groups, um, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Okay, so let me go ahead and write that in and may you have a fabulous afternoon, everybody. Thank you, everyone, again. Thank you. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.